Now, when his young son died in a tragic accident in the early 1990s, the rock guitarist Eric Clapton wrote a moving song called Tears in Heaven. Did you know Eric's son, Connor, had been born after an affair with the Italian model, actress and TV presenter, Laurie Del Santo. At the time, Eric was married to someone else. He'd struggled with addiction to heroin and alcohol and was often away on the road. So Laurie brought Connor up alone. On the day of his death, she'd recently moved to an apartment on the 53rd floor of a building in New York. When a cleaner accidentally left a window open, four-year-old Connor fell through and was killed. Laurie is now working on a film about her life. She's been telling me how she's coped with the good luck and terrible misfortune that fate has brought her. My father died when I was three years old and I never saw him practically. And my mother, she was in the countryside and she didn't know how to work out the, you know, the fields and everything. So she went through a nightmare to try to, with two kids, to try to get to work in town without to be able to drive and no money at all because he left suddenly, you know, with a car accident. So I remember it's been very difficult for me because she was very poor and she was constantly crying. And when I was 18, I just left home without to say anything and I, I, with nothing and I went in an adventure. My life is an adventure. <laughs> so you turned your back on your mother? Well, she couldn't do anything for me and she couldn't give me any education really, but she was a wonderful woman. I mean, working night and day, but you know, you feel when it's the end, you know, when they can't you know, parents can't give you any more. And, and, you, and so, you started to get work as a model, I think. Oh, yeah. Modeling and then actress. I wanted the excitement of the stage. And I was trying to read the papers, see who was the man to follow up, the things to know. And I knew also that what is advertising. You know, you need to be in the scene, like in papers, newspapers. <laughs> And so how did you meet Eric Clapton? Oh my God, that's an amazing story. I, I was in Milan and I was sh shooting as a photographer because I was doing different things as well to make some money. And this guy calls me up and says, oh, come on, come to dinner with us. I say, no, I'm doing something. He says, no, come on, there is this guy, this English uh, uh, singer. And I say, well, I'm not interested. He goes, come on. I say, no, I'm working. Well, he was insisting and I went to the disc. They sent me near this guy with a beard and I go, who is this? I never even I didn't know. And this guy was not really talking to me, but the only thing he said, he says, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? That was enough. And I say, well, I'm home. I say, why don't you come to visit? So in the morning when I woke up, since I read the daily paper every day, I have this positive, <laughs> you know, habit. And I read in the paper, oh, this guy was there for a concert and they wrote his name, everything. So I started to get some info and then he came to my place and I, I wrote, um, don't forget uh, to meet Clapton and I wrote it with a K instead of, you know, with the wrong You spelled it wrongly. Yes, and he came and he saw the, the paper that was wrong and he go, come on, this is this not my name. I said, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> He so I was quite naive and, um, you know, he tried to, to, to with me. He said, come to my bedroom, like in my hotel. Then I said, well, maybe I never see, I will never see this guy again. So maybe as well to go. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> I went with, because I knew, you know, I know that these people, they, they go with girls and they forget who they are. They don't even, but you know, I felt, I felt that I would have remembered anyway, this experience all my life. And so I decided to go. But then, you know, I thought, okay, it's over. He will never come in. Instead, you know, one day he calls me. I said, where are you? I said, I'm at home. He says, and I said, where are you? And he goes, I'm here in Milan. Oh, my God. I say, and why are you here? And he said, because I love you. Oh, my God. I go, what? 
Oh my God! I said, you know, really. So you decided to have a child together. Was that something you talked about and agreed to do? Yes, that w- happened in Milan. Uh, one day he said, "Oh," I says, "But uh, what do you desire?" Well, I said, "You know, I'm getting old." Well, I was on just. 26 or something but you know i was thinking i was getting old and and i go my god i'm getting old i think i want a a child you know and he goes oh me too i think eric clapton actually recorded a song called lady of verona and gave it to you just before you gave birth yes you you know things happens then he called me and he says so it's taking a month in a month you go say what do you do i said i would like to come to london and he said okay and he took, he got a house for me, you know, in um, those mouse, like, you know, those people, the, those little streets in London. A beautiful. Muse, house. muse, muse, sorry. Yeah. And then uh, he put me there. He got the, you know, reservation in the hospital. He said, "Oh, we got you the best hospital in town." Lady Diana had his first son there. And then he wrote, you know, in that period, he came out with uh, an album called August because the baby was born in August. So as Connor got older, what sort of a character was he? What sort of a boy was he? Oh, my God. I think of him crying now because, okay, I had other two children. I had two kids again, but no, no one like him. He, 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 first of all, he could have, he was singing. He was a singer. He was the singer of the school. His voice was amazing. And, and he was such a character. He was making me laugh all the time because he had such a sense of humor. And, you know, when the accident happened, Eric was in New York and he just saw the baby the day before and he spent a whole day with him. With Connor? And, yeah. And he taken, day, did he not take Connor to the circus as well? Oh, the night before, yes. The we, night before the accident? Oh, yes. We spent, me too. I was there. We went to this amazing uh, show and I was looking at the scene and I think, I think, oh my God, maybe in the future, you know, something is going to happen different. You know, you never have to despair. You have always to think about positive in life. Oh, Everything so is like there. like a bit of a family back together again at the circus. Yes, and we had and, a great time. But, but Laurie, then, obviously the next day, this uh, terrible tragedy happened. Oh, can, can you bear to tell us what happened? Well, you know, there was a, a window which was even a wall. It was not even a window that was broken in that house, which I didn't know. It was a very high building, wasn't it? Oh, you 50 floor, 50, you know. I didn't know, come on, I didn't know. How could I even think that a wall opens up in such, in a fifth so floor? So it was a glass, wall, a glass wall, effectively. Yes, on which yes. floor were you? 53 50, or something. Right, on, on, on a very high floor. Yes, very high, and I didn't know. And the waiter I was cleaning, and to get some fresh air, he opened it up, and the baby was running with the babysitter. She was running you know like to hide hide and Playing seek. hide and seek exactly and suddenly he ran into that room because first he came to talk to me and he said mom what's up and i go hey get ready dad is coming get ready is because they are supposed to go to the park together but he ran you know like he wanted to have the last jump or the and obviously he opened up because the door was closed in the bedroom he opened up the bedroom door and f- Unfortunately, felt some hair coming through from air. This I don't know something open, and he's curious, intelligent boy. And then I felt some silent. And I said, where, where were you? I was at the bed. There was downstairs. There was a two floor. And I said, I called him. I said, Hey, where are you? And I feel uh, there's noise. There's no noise. I see that the wait, the guy, the cleaning guy. I said, What's the? Bed? I said, I don't know. It just went through. But I cannot see him anymore. <gasps> then I went into the room and I saw the window open and he wasn't there. That's it. I thought, okay, this is the end. This is, that's it. No, that's it. I, it. Must have been an appalling shock. Oh my God! It was such because everything you know that was a sunny day, spring was coming. It's one of those, uh, you know, when I even think about this stuff. Uh, well. You know, I still get emotion because... I understand. But I try to... And did Eric come? Did you manage to ring Eric? Oh, he was coming. He was coming. He had an appointment. He was coming. He actually rang the, the bell. And I had to tell him, you know... Mm. That's a terrible moment. I'm yeah. sorry to make you relive it. No, but, I, you know, everything I, goes back together in a minute. I just... Just this this vision always makes me feel weird. But of then, course, of course. Yeah. And, and it must have taken you... An enormously long time to come to terms with your grief. I mean, years I couldn't go into any school where the kids are, you know, to hear the noise. (laughs) And, uh, but, you know, 
But a, a Eric, long time. Eric obviously used his music as one way of dealing with his oh grief. Oh my God, that song! He wrote song? a very famous song. Did, oh, oh did, have you God. ever heard it? Have you oh, listened to it? Oh, crazy! I I was walking, I don't know where, uh, from a shop. This song, I heard. Uh, they told me, yeah, this song out, but I never wanted to hear this song. You know, I was escaping the moment, and then I was there in that shop, and this song goes on. Beautiful song. Oh, I just, you know, I understood that he put his everything there. You know, his pain, his everything, and so. For, for a lot of us listening to it, it's a very moving song to listen to. For you, it must be almost unbearable. Oh God, that song. In fact, if I, okay, but I must admit, it's a beautiful song. Really, something that uh, you know, you you can feel your heart. Actually, you know, uh, shaken. But, um, I wonder, as you've reflected back over the years, yeah. how you make sense of something so random, something so mm -hmm. accidental, something that nobody could have predicted, coming yes. at you out of a, a blue sky like that. Oh. Well, Do you make sense of it at all? Yes, I think life, it's, uh, if it con it's a surprise, you know. The only thing is difficult to cope with this life, but, you know, you have to understand that life is like to cross a river. You never know if you can make it, but you have to try. The Italian model, actress and TV presenter Lori Del Santo recalling the tragic events which inspired the song Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton. You're with Outlook from the BBC World Service. I'm Matthew Bannister.